Okay. So again, this slide just summarizes the, the results of using the grep file on a number of different sets of data. Right? So each of these represents a set of data that we can now compare to the piece of DNA that we pulled out between our flanking markers. Right? And in order to do that, we need to format a database for use in BLAST. And so to do that, we make use of the uh, format DB command. And that format DB is located within the bin folder that was created when we unpacked BLAST. Okay, and so we want to check to make sure that we actually have the executable in that file. And so again, we can, we can use um, the, the Unix commands to verify that. So we can use the, the PWD command to verify that we're in the right path, that we're in bin. And then we can use the ls command to simply list what's in the folder bin. Okay, so after the, after the ls command, what we see here, so right here is we're in the Unix shell, we're in bin, we type ls, and we can see that the format db executable is in the folder, so we're ready to go. Okay, so the syntax of a command for formatting a database looks like this. So we, we issue the format db command, and, and one of the things that I want to point out is that different versions of Unix will require this to be written in a slightly different way. Um, there's a portable, portable version of SIGWIN, uh, which is an emulator of Unix, and that portable version will require that you actually put format db.exe here. Most other versions won't. Um, the dash i tells us to then name the input file. And so this is the file that we're formatting. Um, in this case, it could be one of the files that we downloaded, or it could be our scaffold file. Right? So this um, dot slash here is just telling us that that file is located in the same path as format db. So in this case, we've moved it into the bin folder. Dash p is asking us, is the file a protein file? And it's not, so we tell it false, put an F there. So that's the syntax, right? Um, and so we, we issue this command, and what we should see then is that in the bin file, we've now created three new files. The files have the database name, and then the, the appendage NHR, NIN, or NSQ. Okay, so if we use the ls command and we see those three files, were created, we know it's gone well, it's worked. Okay, and so now we're ready to run a standalone blast. Okay, and so the syntax of that command looks something like this. Um, we use blast all, we tell it that the program that we're using is blast n. And remember I mentioned that there are different flavors of blast, and so this is where you would invoke different flavors to accommodate different databases. In our case, we've got a nucleotide database against a nucleotide query, and so BLASTN is appropriate. Dash D tells us that the next statement is going to be the database. Okay, this is the database that we just formatted. And then the input in this case is our query file. And in this case, our query file would be, for instance, the scaffold that contains our flanking markers. And then dash O tells us what the name of the output file would be. And so we've just named the output file output. Okay? So when we type this in, what we're doing is we're taking the data that's in the query file and we're blasting that against the formatted database. All right? Okay. And so the next step involves viewing the results of this blast search. Okay? And so a simple search can be viewed by opening the output file in a text editor. But remember, you've got the capabilities here of taking, let's say, for example, the TA496 data set with over 116 sequences and the Microtom data set and blasting those against each other. Right? Um, that, that's not a search that I would recommend, um, but I will tell you, you won't open the results in a text editor. Um, so there's some other approaches that you can use, and this is where the advantage of Linux really comes in. Um, you can use some basic Unix commands, and I mentioned grep 
already to tell you something about what you got back. Um, the head and tail commands will allow you to look at the beginning or the end of the document, um, but not the whole thing. The less command will actually open up the whole file within units, and then you can scroll through it that way, and you would use quit uh, to exit that mode. Okay, and so this is just showing an example of using um, the, a database of TA-496 with a scaffold query, and there's a number of hits that have shown up. Okay, and what we could do is we could scroll way down this, and there are pages and pages of information. The hits, um, the alignments, everything is there. And so what I want to talk about next is how we can actually um, take this information, condense it, so that we can do some human intervention, some evaluation to determine where our best targets for markers are going to be. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to use BioPerl and Perl to parse it. And again, in, in your packets, if you're here or online, if you're, if you're at home, there are some examples of Perl scripts that run through what I'm going to talk about. Um, and so in, in the case of this parsing file, um, the, general, the general usage is just the, the BLAST report file name, the number of sequences we want to extract, and the new output file name. Um, so anything in a, in a Perl program that has this pound sign before it is simply commented out. Um, and then the beginning of the program, I I've highlighted this because I, I wanted to show you that here we're invoking BioPerl and the search I.O. module. This line right here may or may not be necessary. If you can get everything installed at a root level, you won't need this line of the program. And so there's, I've given you two examples of this particular program so you can compare. One would be appropriate for the root, and one is appropriate for my computer, where everything is, um, where Perl is housed within the library file under David, under users at home. Right, so this what this is telling is where to go and look for Perl, okay, and then it invokes BioPerl, and then the rest of the program is here, and, and we don't, uh, it wouldn't really be appropriate to go through this line by line. For those of you that are interested, the Perl scripts are available to you. Um, basically, what is going on here is that the Perl script is checking first for the expected three arguments: does it have an input file, a number of hits to extract, and an output file. And then it's using the search I.O. module to pull information from the BLAST report and put that information into a tab-delimited file. Right? And that tab-delimited file now becomes our output file. Okay? And so the key command or the syntax would look like this. Perl, um, the program we're going to use, which is in this case BLAST parsing Perl.1, um, the name of the output file from the BLAST, so this is called out chromosome 11 BLAST. I'm telling it here that I only want 100 hits to be returned, okay? But I could expand this, right? Or I could narrow it down. And then the new file I'm calling chromosome 11 parse, okay? When I open up chromosome 11 parse, this is what I get, okay? So there's, there's a scaffold that I've blasted against, and then accession numbers from the EST database that are hitting that scaffold. Um, there's information on the length of the EST, a description, I've collapsed this line down, um, what the E value is, the bit score, where this particular EST um, first matches the scaffold and where the match ends. Okay. And then the reverse, if, I, if we focus on the, the, the EST itself, um, the hit starts at position 1 and it ends at 805. Okay, so there's, it's over an 800 base pair match and it's 98.8% .8 identical. Right? If I go down to the next line, what I see is I have 765 bases of match and they're 100% identical. Right? So this would represent a sequence that I probably don't want to use as a marker because it's not polymorphic, right? So right away, I think you can see that there's some power in having this output because I can sift through what I shouldn't waste my time on and I can concentrate on other things. If we go down to the third line, we see a sequence that's 89% homologous, 
89% identical, actually, in this case. Um, my experience with market development in tomato is that once you get below high 90s in terms of percent identity, you're probably no longer working with a homolog. Right? You're, you're probably working with actually a member of a gene family, and it's not going to be appropriate for marker development. Right? So there's a very narrow window between 100, which you don't want, and the high 90s that you need to filter. And so you could just use sort commands to generate a list that fits a window of your choosing. Okay, and so now I have a list of ESTs that I think are potential sequences for marker development within a region of the genome that I'm very interested in. Okay, and so the next step then is to retrieve that data in a way that I can make use of it. Right? So one, one approach is to retrieve it directly from the FASTA file, and this may be possible if that FASTA file is small and can be opened in a text editor. But if it's, if it's not, we can again use BioPerl to help it out. Because our list that we just generated, if I go back here, it has what we need to get those sequences. It has an accession number name right here. Right? And so what we can do is we can use BioPerl's ability to search GenBank to pull out just specific sequences. Right? And so the, what we can do is we can just create a list of the genes that we want. Right? So in this case, if we go back here, it's just a matter of, of sorting this and then taking a group of genes from this column that meet our criteria, putting those into a text file, right, in a single column in a text file, saving that as a name, and then, again, using Perl and BioPerl to help us get what we want. And so there's a, there's a program that, that is um, on the website and also in your handout that's called GeneBank Search. And that's exactly what this program does. It only needs uh, two arguments. It needs an input file with the accession numbers in a column, and it needs an output file name. And what this program does is it invokes the BioPro module DB to go into GenBank and pull out the FASTA formatted sequences and it returns those to you in a file. Okay. And so what you've done now or what we've gone through as an example is we've started with flanking markers. We've identified a part of the genome we're interested in. We've then used that in a blast against a set of ESTs and we've identified potentially polymorphic ESTs within that region, and now we've retrieved those sequences. And so we have everything we need to do to build a marker for that, or more markers for that region of the genome. Okay, and so the command to, to execute this program is, again, simply Perl, GenBank Search, that's the name of the program, um, our input file, which is a single column of accession numbers, and an output file name. Okay. So again, I want to point out that the, some of the Perl scripts that I've just mentioned are available um, on, the, on the web. Um, one of the resources that I put up there is a, is a Perl script that simply is used to test if BioPerl has been properly installed. And if you, know, if you run that script, you're going to get a line back that says it works. And so that's going to help you to um, make sure all of the programs are talking together. All right? Um, and there's a couple of scripts there that will help you parse BLAST. There's the one that I gave you as an example, and there's another one where you can actually start entering information into the code itself that can allow you to manipulate the criteria that are returned. So you can, you can manipulate the length of the match, say only give me sequences where the match is over 200. You can manipulate the E value of the match so that you only are, are essentially skimming the cream off of the search. Okay. And then the search, the, the GenBank search script is there as well. Um, okay, so that ends my time. And if there's any questions, I'll be happy to entertain them.